Photography is all about lighting. If you spend tons of money on the most expensive camera, but your lighting sucks, your photos aren't gonna be that good. The opposite is also true. If you have amazing lighting and just an okay camera, your photos will actually look amazing. So in this video, I'm gonna give you some tips for finding the best natural lighting without any use of artificial lights. A common misconception when you're shooting outdoors is that cloudy or overcast skies produces the best lighting, but it's not actually the best lighting, it's just the easiest lighting to get a good photo in. In fact, if you understand how direct sunlight works, you can get just as good a photo. Shooting on an overcast or cloudy day is kind of like shooting with this softbox. Instead of that harsh direct light, you get a much more evenly diffused lighting. But even when the lighting is diffused, you shouldn't ignore the quality, the intensity, or the direction of your lighting. Okay, so the first tip is to make sure you understand where your lighting is coming from. Right now where I'm sitting, I'm underneath a tree canopy, so it's a little bit dark, and I have the sun that's coming out from across the lake, but it's also cloudy, so there's a little bit of diffuse lighting. Now, if I take you closer to the lake over here, watch how the light is on this side of my face, and then as I rotate around, the lighting changes, now it's on this side of my face. So when you're shooting people or subjects or really anything, you need to pay attention to where the lighting is coming from. For this photo, we're standing underneath the tree canopy, so some of that above lighting is being cut off. On the right side of the frame, we have the lake, which is really bright and reflective, so we're getting a lot of the light coming from this side of the photo. If you were to zoom in, you can see we've got this triangle of light, which is called Rembrandt lighting, and it's one of the most flattering types of light you can get on a human face. Now, if you look at the other side of the photo, you can see my arm and my shoulder is all in darkness, and this side of my face as well. Also, when you look at the background, you can see back here is darker, which is allowing me and my face to jump out of this photo. If you were to reverse that and the background was brighter than your subject, then the photo wouldn't look as good. But stay tuned, I'm gonna show you an example of that coming up in just a second. One thing that's really important is to keep your skin tones in the 70 to 75% brightness range. Whether you're shooting photo or video, this is super important, but especially for video because it makes color grading way easier. Here, I'll show you what I mean. So I'm in a photo mode, but here's what the histogram looks like. On the right hand side, you can see that graph and you know, as I move it around, it kind of changes the brightness intensity. And so what I'm gonna wanna do is when I'm shooting a face is to make sure that most of that is in that 70 to 75% brightness range. It can be really tempting to shoot in a location because it looks really cool. Maybe it's a dark alley and you know, as your human eyes look down the alley, you can see all the details. You can see the details in the shadow you can see the details in the sky, and that's because our eyes have really great dynamic range. Dynamic range is the ability to see both the highlights and the shadow details at the same time. If you've ever shot with a camera and you've maybe been a little bit disappointed because it doesn't look as good as how you remember it seeing it with your real eyes, it's because cameras don't have as good a dynamic range as the human eye. Another tip when you're shooting photos or videos is to use negative fill to remove light where you don't want it. If I stand out here where there's just a natural amount of daylight because we have diffuse skies with clouds and I just have an overall even amount of downlighting, and if I move to this side and stand next to this really dark object, this black surface is going to remove any of the light that was hitting this side of my face, which is what you call a negative fill. But if I move a little bit to this brighter surface, you can see it actually has the opposite effect. This side of my face kind of has a more even amount of illumination. Any of the light that misses my face is gonna bounce off of this surface and bounce back and illuminate that side of my face. The effect is very subtle, but if you were to buy something like a dedicated reflector where it's pure white on one side and pure black on the other, you could exaggerate that effect to get even more fill or even more negative fill. Here's a photo that demonstrates how the environment can affect your lighting. I'm standing in the middle of this courtyard with these really tall, dark buildings that are absorbing all the light from in front and from behind me. What I'm getting is this really strong top-down lighting effect where my face is illuminated, but then 
Everything down here is in shadow. Now, this might work depending on the types of photos you're doing, but let's say the photo you're doing, the photo shoot you're doing is more of a light and airy fill. Well, you probably don't wanna shoot in this dark courtyard. You probably wanna shoot in the middle of an open field or where you have lots of bright reflective surfaces. One thing you'll notice with this footage is that my face looks really dark, even though my camera tells me that this shot is overexposed. And that's because the sky over here is is really bright and just ends up being completely white. You can get that back if you're shooting with raw photos, but with video, your footage will look better if you up your exposure so that your skin tones are in that 70% range. Also, if you really wanted to make this better, find lighting that is a little bit more flattering for your face. Lighting is easily the most important factor that can make or break your images. With enough practice, you'll have no problem identifying where the lighting is coming from and how it affects the images that you're about to take. If you enjoyed this video, here are two more that you can check out or get out and shoot some of your own photos. Consider subscribing and if you do, I'll see you in the next one.